Hello friends, this is Matt Hatel Masri again. Today, we're going to internationalize our application. By that, I mean identify the languages that we're interested in, and we will uh, make sure that our application works in those languages. So I will start with Visual Studio 2017, and I'll just create a simple MVC template. So I'll go File, New, Project. And I'm going to choose ASP.NET Core Web Application. And I will give it a name, call it Global App. And I'll choose the Web Application Model View Controller template. I'm not going to add any authentication. And I will disable configure for HTTPS. Click on OK. Now, for this to work while it's loading, I need to add some configurations to the startup.cs file. So you can expect that in the startup.cs file, under configure services, I'll be adding some code here where I will configure the languages that I want to support in this app. So I'll grab some code and I'll explain to you as we work on it. In my configure services method, I'm going to add this piece of code. This piece of code specifies the folder under which I'm going to put my resource files. So I'm saying here that it has to be resources. So in that case, I have to come here and add a new folder called resources. And here it is. I just added a resources folder here. That's the first line of code. The second thing I need to add are the fact that even though I'm going to be using this resources folder, I'm indicating here that I'm going to have view localization and data annotation localizations. The three places where you need to do translations really are in your controllers, in your views, and your data annotations. Here I'm saying that I'm going to implement view localization and data annotation localization. Let me resolve this. I also need to specify the cultures that I want to support. For that, I will bring in some more code. Also in the configure services method, I'm going to paste this code here that indicates the cultures that I want to support. Let me resolve these. Close look at this code will show that I will be supporting English, English US, French, French spoken in France, Chinese, Egyptian Arabic, and I might add a couple. For example, let me say here, I'll copy this one and paste. Say I want to support also Russian, and I want to support Japanese, which is JA. Down here, I'm saying that my default culture is going to be English US. And the supported cultures are going to be this set of culture info that I have. And the supported UI cultures are going to be also this supported cultures list that I have. In the configure method, I need to add some code here that will add globalization into the pipeline. And this is the code for that. 
here I'm saying that I will be indeed using globalization in my pipeline. Let us see how we can go about globalizing our controller. So I'm going to go to my controller and the only controller I have here is the home controller. So let's go to the home controller and add to the con home controller this class that enables localization. And there's a class called the iString localizer. This is the key to implementing multiple languages for your web application. So here I'm going to declare an instance of this particular class. And it is really an interface. I need to inject this through dependency injection inside of the constructor. So I need to have a constructor here. So let me create a constructor. And in this constructor, I'm going to inject one of these. And let me assign my instance variable to the argument that's being passed here. <coughs> now I'm ready to use this localizer object. Let's assume that this is the text that I want to translate, your application description page. Simply put, I'm going to put this in the localizer dictionary, like this. And this becomes my key. Now, so far, we haven't really added a resource file and we have done no translation. So let's see what's going to happen if I run this application and I go to the about action method. What is it going to display? And I will tell you that it's going to display this text. Because if it doesn't find a value for that key, it defaults to the key. So let's try that out. So if I click on about, we get this text here, which is essentially the key in our dictionary. Let's close this and let us create a resource file. So I have here a folder called resources. Under this resources file, the convention is for controllers to create a folder called controllers. And under that, you'd put a resource file for the controller that you're dealing with. So I'm going to come here under resources. I'm going to add a new folder and I'm going to call it controllers. I'm going to have this structure. And in this controllers folder, I'm going to create a resource file. So I'm going to go add new item and in the filter I can enter resource and that will provide me with this item that I can add. Now the name of the item has to be the name of the controller. So in my case it's home controller followed by the language code. So let's assume I want to translate my app into France French. So it's going to be fr hyphen big fr. So this is what the resource file would be for French spoken in France. So let me click on that. It creates for us this resource file, and then you'd be expected here to enter a bunch of name value pairs. So now, for the key that I want to translate, I'm going to go into my controller. So the key will be this text file here, 
in the home controller. I'll copy that and go into my resource file and paste it for the name of the key. And for the value, I'll bring in the translation for that. So here's my name value pair. This is the key and this is the translation. So let us try this app and see if it's going to work. So if you go to about and then enter the query string culture equals to fr hyphen big fr. This is what I entered here. Hit enter and sure enough it does a translation right there. Now let us localize a view. So as an example of a view, let's look at the about view, which is this one. Let us translate this text here. I'm going to change it to about us. So to do that, we have to inject this iView localizer object. And the way that's done is simply import this assembly and use the inject directive here to inject this object as this instance variable. And this is the equivalent of doing it in the constructor. Once you have this, turn this into a key. Now, we will need to set up the appropriate structure. Under resources, we need to create a folder called views. And under views, we're going to create a folder for the controller, which in our case is home. Under that, you'll create a resource file by the name of your view. So I'm going to add a resource file. Now, it's a little bit easier to copy what I have here and paste it rather than go add item it just takes too much time so I'm going to take a copy of this come here and paste it here and I will rename this by the name of the view which is essentially about now let me experiment with a different language let's say Japanese so I'm going to rename this to Japanese JA. So this is what my structure looks like now. I created a folder called Views under Resources. Under there, there's a Home folder. And here I have the name of my resource file. Let me open this up. And I need to change this to About Us. The key is going to be About Us. And let's go and translate this using Google Translate, for example. So I'm going to search for Google Translate. And here it is. So this is about us. We want to translate it to Japanese. And this is the Japanese version of that copy that and bring it in here. Let's try it out. So now if we go to about and enter culture Japan here, so that would be question mark culture equals to JA. And sure enough, it translates it to Japanese. So we learned how to do it for a controller, we learned how to do it for a view, 
The last thing we want to learn is how do you do it for a model through annotations. I'm going to create a folder in my app which I shall call view models. So add folder, call it view models. And in this folder, I shall create a class called contact view model. I'm going to add a class called contact view model. I shall replace the code for contact view model with this code. What I'm saying here is I just have one property because I want to keep it simple. It's email. This piece of data is required. So I'm going to add a required annotation with an error message required. And it's also of type email. So if it turns out that the format of the text that's coming in is not email, it's going to display this message. The email field is not a valid email address. And finally, the display name is your email. So all of these items have to be translated. Let's try a different language this time. The resource file for this has to also exist under the resource folder and has to follow essentially this tree structure where it comes under global app view models. So I have to create under resources a folder called view models. And under that view models folder, I'll create a resource file by the name of the class that contains these annotations that I want to translate. So the name of the class is this contact model view. What I'll do is I'll copy one of these resource files from here, copy them, and put it into my view models folder. And I'm going to rename this file that's in the view models folder such that it follows the convention the class name dot the language that I'm translating. Let me translate it to ZHCN which is Chinese. So that would be ZH hyphen CN. So this is the tree structure that I created. Under resources, I created view models, and under view models, I created a resource file by the name of the class that it's supposed to work with. So now, let us translate the things that need to be translated. So there are these three keys. One of them is required. Let me go back in here and add the key required and delete this for the moment. The next key is I want to translate the email field is not a valid email address. Copy that. Come in here. Paste it. Next, we pick up your email. Copy that and paste it. We need, need to do a bit of translation now. So let's go to required. Copy this. Go to Google Translation and convert it to Chinese. I'm going to copy this now and put it in the required row. And then let's copy the email field is not a valid email field. Pass it through the translation. Copy this, paste it in here, and finally your email, copy this, 
interpreted here. Okay? In order to test this out, I have to create a form that will display this model. And for that, I'm going to try to do it in a different view from the about view that we, we've been playing with. So I'm going to try the contact view. I'll add a form to this. So in here, I'm going to get rid of all the stuff here and add a form. But before I add a form, I have to point it to the model that I'm dealing with. And my model is global app dot view models dot contact view model. And the form I'm going to add is this. So I have a form here and it uses the post method to post to an action method called contact, which I don't have yet, but I'll build that in. I have an email field here and I have a button. And if I submit something, it will display here in this header four. Let me go and add this contact action method. So I'll go into my controller and add a contact action method here at the bottom, just for demo purposes. And you can see here that if the data is valid, it's going to put the word success in this field. So we need to localize the word success. I'm going to leave that to you as an exercise but this success has to be localized in the home controller, not in a data annotation. Now that we've come this far, we can go about testing this and see whether the data annotation works. So I would come to contact and then let's try changing the culture to ZHCN. And there you go. This is coming from our model class. The last thing I want to do is show you how you can add to your web application a drop down list where you can get the user to choose the language that they want to view the website with. And this will involve some code a partial view and an action method. The partial view is a form that will inspect the languages that we are supporting and that information comes from the startup.cs file because in our startup.cs file we actually indicated the languages that we are supporting. That configuration will be inspected by this partial view and it will display it in a drop down list. I'm going to add a partial view and the partial view goes in the shared folder here. I'm going to add view and I'll choose create a partial view. The name of the partial view I shall call it select language partial. Let me create it. I'll replace the code in this partial view with this. Here I'm importing all these and I'll be injecting the localizer object in here. And this is the code that will go and find out what are the cultures that I'm supporting. And the cultures that I'm supporting would be these culture items. I'm going to display those 
in a drop down list here and then there will be a button that you can click in order to choose one of these but when you click on the save button it will post to an action method called set language in the home controller so I have to go and put some code for this action method so I'll go to the home controller and add an action method and this is my action method <coughs> this action method is going to use the language that I selected and push that into the cookie request culture provider in other words it's going to save it in a cookie on the local machine I created my partial view I created my action method but nowhere am I using this partial view how about I load that partial view in the layout page of my application in the footer area so let me load my layout find out where my footer is here's my footer and I'll replace this footer with a call to the partial view so that the partial view is loaded in this section and here goes this is where I'm loading the partial view so let us run this and see if it's gonna work let me go to about and here is that partial view being loaded the about we translated it previously into French and Japanese so let us choose those languages French France save and you can see that it translated it to French let's try Japanese and you can see it translated it to Japanese so this is a mechanism for you to allow your users to choose the language that they want without having to go into the browser language settings and to persist this in a in a cookie on their machine thank you for watching my video I hope to see you in other videos in the future